Now, this is my favourite part of the night, hands down. And this is a sec section of the show that we put online where we find out how you feel about the conversations we've had tonight. I want to start with the Commonwealth Games conversation, which had a bit of cricket, had a bit of Commonwealth Games, it had a bit of empire. It was quite broad. Put your hand up um, if you'd have something to say about that. I am now looking for you to put your hand up. Thank you very much. Um, what did you make of that conversation and the way it was handled? Uh, thanks, PK. I don't think they understood the question. I, the, the idea of conquestors can kind of completely flawed them. So it took some time for that one to get momentum. So yeah. slow start, but good question though. But but maybe could have been phrased in a way that really pointed at the UK, maybe, and and at the colonialism and what that means for us. But if you listen to what the minister said, the the minister from the UK, he actually did point to okay, we can you can have views about the past, but we're talking about the future because. They talk that way about it, don't they? Yeah, they do. They do. And, and we, we do have to move on. And how we deal with our past is really, really difficult. Now, I went to a 200-year family reunion uh, in Tasmania two weeks ago. That was really difficult for me because I understood the privilege that my family had stood upon. So when you can connect to people personally, that's, that's um, yeah, very powerful. Yeah, I think so too. That's a great point. Oh, there is another hand here. Um, hopefully on the same topic, because the next one I'm moving to is the voice and that conversation. Yeah, same topic. Uh, very concerned that no mention was made of the compensation that could be uh, due and payable here. Been reported in the press that it could be uh, between 250 mil and one bill. That's, that's huge. Yeah, it is huge. And the idea of who's responsible, right? I mean, how did it blow out like that? Well, there's a thing called breach of contract here. That's, that's, that's critical in this process. Do you think it was the wrong decision to bid in the first place? That's not someone, for me to... Someone said yep back yeah. then. That's not for me to comment on that. <laughs> I, I need to see the data before I made a decision. Data is a very powerful thing. Yeah. Fair enough. No one's now, ever responsible for the stuff up to the Victorian government. Yeah. Well, that is your no one, view. No I know right. other people have other views. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're disappointed with how it's been handled? Yeah, absolutely. I can't reach you, but I'm going to hand over the mic and you're going to pass it along and everyone's going to hear me anyway. <laughs> yeah, like, it's not the first stuff up we've had in Victoria that's cost a billion dollars. <laughs> and we've had, we've had um, inquiries got cost millions of dollars and no-one's ever responsible. Is that, a, is that a kind of overall thing that you observe about governments, though? It is about the Victorian government at the moment. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I know there is a lot of grumpiness about this issue. Now, the other thing, of course, is, and we don't have a date yet, can I say, but we, have, we are in a referendum year and the yes and the no pamphlets have been published. Rachel Perkins is a pretty um, significant leader for the yes campaign. Barnaby Joyce has become one of the leading no voices and other people obviously had different views. I wonder if you want to put your hand up if you've got a view about, uh, <laughs> clearly a strong view, because people are pointing to you, about the way that those questions were handled. I wanted to say to uh, Barnaby Joyce that we already have a third chamber, and that's the lobby groups. And get rid of them and give it to The Voice. Okay. And he would say, I can't believe I'm channelling a politician, but just the counter-argument, but they're not in the Constitution. That's the problem. They're not in the Constitution. <laughs> so we you're did, saying... We didn't, we didn't agree to lobby, lobby groups at all. No, that, that's... I think, I think a lot of people think about the other groups that have influence on governments as well in this broader conversation. Um, what did you think of the idea of this, this advertisement and the way that... It depicts people in this debate. What do you reckon? There's a student here, so I'm running to the student. Oh, I'm just going to break the microphone while I'm at it. Uh, Emerald Secondary College. Um, I haven't really articulated what I was going to say, but um, <laughs> I think it's. But now um, you have a microphone. Yeah, now I've got a microphone. Um, I think it's the belief of most of my peers here and at school. We're constantly having conversations about what the voice actually is. Um, I think um, it's my personal view that it's kind of been shoved down my throat a little bit. You know, I see ads on TV, and um, it's not that I don't want to vote. Yes, I'm recently 18, so I'll oh, be so you expected. Can vote. I can vote. So. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think um, it was really important tonight to have that discussion and it's really opened my eyes and I think it's really opened the eyes of my peers here for a member of secondary college. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to be voting yes now. So. Are you? <laughs> yeah. What were you thinking before? Well, <laughs> okay. When... I've got more questions. <laughs> when did you become le legal to vote? Are you registered? And how were you thinking of voting before? Well, <laughs> it was my choice... Um, um, my, my preference not to vote at all. Um, it's kind of a hot topic at the moment. It's a bit intimidating, yeah. um, I think, to a lot of young people and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, just watching TV at night, scrolling through your phone on Instagram and that sort of thing, I think the, the yes vote, you know, is really prominent in my mind of that sort of thing. And I probably would have voted yes anyway, just to, you know, go along. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's really, it's really good that I now what know. Convinced what convinced you? Um... I, I don't know. I now, I now know what the yes vote was about and um, the ideals behind it. And, um, yeah, it was really Im um, important to me to hear it from someone who is qualified to speak of um, the yes vote. And, yeah, so... OK. That's yeah. really interesting. I'm glad that you can vote. I mean, I just... I got so excited when I was allowed to vote, can I say. I was like, guys, I'm allowed to vote! Are you excited about voting? Oh. No, I am not excited to vote. <laughs> Maybe to get the sausages. But um, with what you were you saying... You just go to Bunnings. Yeah, true. Yeah. But those prices... Anyway, what you were saying about um, it being shoved down our throats in the advertisement, like, that... It, I really think it's not good. It shouldn't be done in that capacity. I want the information, not the opinions. Yeah. I don't... Sorry. I don't really care about what other people think. I, I just want the data, what's it about, how's it going to influence things. And I feel like... Instead of that, I've been given other people's opinions, which mm. isn't what I want. Yeah, that's really interesting. What's the voting age to 16? This is a... <laughs> this is a... want to do that. ...other end of the spectrum. I've been able to vote for 66 years. <laughs> and this is the most important question I have ever been asked, and I think you'll ever be asked. It is to deal with our constitution. It's to deal with the future of our country. So we've got to have information and we've got to get good information. Not, and I'd like uh, Q&A to hold a session before the referendum in which we do not have politicians, but we do have people who will give us information and the questions asked are genuine seeking information, not just opinions and, uh, you know, you know, and gossip. Mm. But, but I, I absolutely understand the point you're making. But people do have different opinions on this question. And, yes, but sometimes those very issues are contested by some people. So, you know, there are... There are varied views on this. Let me not run into you again. Um, that was awkward before, did you see? I just nearly knocked someone down. How embarrassing. It was going to be an incident. I saw your hand up. I, I think that one of the things that's happened is that there's been so much complication. I, one of the first people I heard speak about The Voice was Noel Pearson. And he, for me, put it in a nutshell. He said, we have to make a decision. He said, imagine if... We were at a position in history where the Sydney Harbour Bridge had not yet been built. The first decision we had to make was, do we need a bridge? That's the referendum question. Do we need a bridge? When we decide if we need a bridge, that's when we start getting together in groups and discussing and debating and voting on what size it's going to be. Will it be made of wood? Will it be made of steel? What colour will it be? All of those sorts of questions. And I think that the simplicity of that explanation was so powerful, it stayed with me. And I think that the <clears throat> both the yes vote and the no vote have overcomplicated what essentially is a simple conceptual principle. And you think both campaigns have made it more complicated? Yes, I do. I do. Interesting. Now, this brings our great conversation to a close. Can I just thank you all for coming out on a Monday night? I'm going to be hosting the show for the rest of the year and it's been such a great... Thank you. Such a great night to begin our next season with all of you Melburnians, true to my heart, even my old suburb. Thank you very much.